Hi, my name is Leslie Ann Jones, and you're watching The Art of Music Tech. I got into the music business the uh, old-fashioned way. I was born into it. My parents were uh, performers. My father was Spike Jones, the uh, band leader and satirist. And my mother was Helen Greco, uh, a singer uh, who joined my father's band. And then uh, later they got married. And uh, so I, I did grow up in the music business with music around all the time. My father had a wonderful uh, record collection, ranging from Elvis Presley to the great classics to a lot of percussion. So I was surrounded by a lot of different music when I was growing up. And I ended up uh, playing more rock guitar, uh, joined a band. Um, we did a, a lot of touring, playing clubs, top 40 kind of stuff, uh, more, more rock than folk. And I purchased the uh, sound system for the band and then formed a company with a couple of friends of mine that had uh, PA equipment. We did a lot of sound for a lot of other acts. I actually had a home studio in the early 70s when Tascam came out with their first uh, uh, small Model 10 mixer and their half inch uh, four track. And um, I wanted to be a producer and a manager, not a recording engineer. And I thought I should learn something about uh, recording. So uh, I applied for a job at ABC Studios because I was working for ABC Records at the time and that was my first first job. And um, But I ended up being a career recording engineer and I've been doing it for over 40 years. I, you know, use a big large format analog console and I still like to have my hands on faders and move them and change balances and do all of that. So, But I'm the kind of engineer that I like to balance things before it gets recorded so that I don't have to rebalance it later. And that's really hard to do unless you have a, a, a console that you can manipulate the sound uh, going in. I would say one piece of equipment that I use every day is my Lexicon 224. It's one of the first uh, digital reverbs that had a, a controller called a, a Lark, and it's very simple. It's only got about eight sounds, but I tend to like simple things like that because they generally were the first on their block to come out with something, and it sounds really good for what it is before things got too crazy and you could manipulate every ounce of something. Usually I don't have time for that. I kind of just want something to sound good with a couple of button pushes. I do tend to use um, Neumann mics on a lot of occasions, both because of the music that I do, which is orchestras and a lot of uh, classical work, but they, they also just have such a wide range of, uh, of uh, microphones. Last year I uh, produced and recorded the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra performing uh, Kip Winger's Conversations with Dijonski. Kip is probably best known as uh, from the uh, rock band uh, Winger, but he's actually a classically trained, went and trained with several wonderful composers and wrote a piece for a ballet that the San Francisco Ballet did, and then that turned into a recording of that piece plus two others, and, and uh, Kip just got uh, nominated for a, a Grammy Award for Best uh, Contemporary Classical uh, Composition. So that was... Um, also a lot of fun. As you can imagine, quite an experience working for a facility like Skywalker Sound, um, particularly you know, something that was really designed by George to uh, facilitate the sound for his own uh, films. But from the very beginning, Skywalker has done sound for uh, many other uh, movies. And of course, we do a lot of the post-production for Pixar films and uh, Disney films. And that was true even before uh, Disney bought the uh, uh, company. But, um, you know, we don't get to see George as much as, as we used to. Certainly his presence is still felt in the building uh, because it's a company he created. <laughs>